Okay, example two, 1,500 is what percent of 250? Once again, some number is some percent of some number, so it's got that structure again. As soon as I see that structure, I immediately go to fraction bar equals fraction bar over 100. We always start with the percent, so what's the percent in this case? Unknown, so what percent means we don't know. PJ said X, we'll go with X, all right? Next, um, next to the word is is what? 1,500. Be careful when they start spelling out numbers um, in word form that you get the whole number. I've seen people put 15 on this problem. So 1,500 means 1,500. And of is next to, of course, 250. So 250 goes there. Now, this time, you know, the numbers are a little bit larger than they were last time. You might want to reduce stuff before you cross multiply. It's not a requirement. This is something to think about. Uh, for me, I would probably reduce this. 1,500 and 250 both actually divide by 10, obviously. They also divide by 25, so that becomes 1, that becomes 6. All right. Uh, vertical reduction is legal, horizontal reduction is legal. Take your pick. And then once you um, get everything reduced, and once this is a 1, you can't go any further. I can't reduce 1 with 100 or 6. I've seen people try to reduce this way if you're multiplying diagonally, so be careful if you're only reducing vertically or horizontally, not diagonally. Once you get a 1 opposite your x diagonally, you can't reduce it. 1x equals 600. And that is 600%. It says what percent? It's 600%. Um, but it gets you exactly what you're looking for. It is possible to solve a percent sentence problem by writing an equation. Uh, the equation gets you a decimal form of the number, not the percent form. So if you did an equation on this one, you would have gotten x equals 6, which is actually the same as 600%. But pr proportion gets you exactly what you're looking for. So again, I would go this route every single time to avoid any confusion in my 